everybody. I'm Pastor Gil Zaragoza, and welcome to Bible Concepts with Pastor Gil Zaragoza, where Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father, and unto Him be the honor and the glory forever and ever. And all of God's people shout a good hearty amen and amen, amen, amen. Well, the presence of the Lord is here. Amen. We're we're ready for a, a powerful session here this morning in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're talking about what it means to confess with the mouth. And this is part of a master series, Faith Fundamentals. We have already talked about how faith comes. We've already talked about what faith is. Right now we're talking about how we release our faith in God, and we do it two ways. Number one, by believing with the heart the Word of God. And number two, by confessing with our mouth what is in our heart in abundance. And so we've already talked about what it means to believe with the heart. And right now we are talking about what it means to confess with the mouth. And I tell you, this is a very powerful subject. It needs to be covered and taught at length. So we're going to teach it with no stone unturned, if you will. No stone, no rock unturned in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So praise God. Let's believe God together. And let's go ahead and get into this in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray and believe God together in Jesus' name. Father in heaven. We praise you, we adore you, we magnify you. Father, we declare your glory in this place. Holy Spirit, you are welcome to this telecast. You have free reign here. Lord, we embrace your anointing wholeheartedly right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We are yours to command, so we submit ourselves completely to you. Lord, take this telecast and use it for your honor and for your glory. And I pray for the congregation that is watching today, the television congregation that is watching right now. Give them open ears to hear your word and a receptive heart to receive your word. And we'll be careful to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory for everything that is going to be accomplished here this morning in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to whom honor and glory be forever and ever. In Jesus' mighty name, and all of God's people shout a good hearty, amen and amen and amen. Praise God. Well, we're talking about four different kinds of confession that is taught in the Word of God. Of course, the first confession that we've already, we have already covered is the teaching of John the Baptist and Jesus to the Jews that was the confession of their sins. Okay, that's number one, the teaching of John the Baptist and Jesus to the Jews that was the confession of their sins. What we're teaching right now is number two, the second confession, the confession of the sinner under the new covenant. Okay, the confession of the sinner under the new covenant. Now, in Romans chapter 10, Okay, Romans chapter 10, verses 8 through 10, for the honor and glory of the Lord. Look at what Paul wrote here under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost in Romans chapter 10, verses 8 through 10, for the honor and glory of the Lord. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart, that is the word of faith which we preach. Verse 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Verse 10, For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Notice verse 10, For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Now, notice verse 9 one more time. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Okay? We said to you that this particular confession based on Romans chapter 9, that if thou, Romans chapter 10, Romans chapter 10 verse 9, Romans chapter 10 verse 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. This is the real confession that the sinner makes. The sinner has served Satan, and the sinner is guilty of only one sin and one sin only, and that is rejecting and accepting Jesus Christ, rejecting in accepting Jesus Christ as their personal Savior and Lord. 
And God demands that the sinner confess the Lordship of Jesus Christ. This is real repentance, and this is real faith. Okay? It's a self-evident fact that the sinner is a child of the devil. The thing that the sinner must confess is the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Okay? Now, there's a statement that's going to appear there on your screen, so I'm going to read this statement twice for the honor and glory of the Lord. The sinner must confess Jesus Christ as his personal Savior in order to be saved. He must let Jesus Christ dominate his life. Confessing the Lordship of Jesus Christ is the heart of the gospel. Let me say this one more time. The sinner must confess Jesus Christ as his personal Savior in order to be saved. He must let Jesus Christ dominate his daily life. That means being Lord, okay? Confessing the Lordship of Jesus Christ is the heart of the gospel. Again, Romans chapter 10, verse 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Now, we said this to you, and we're just going to pick up today what the Lord would have for us, and then we're just going to move on in the name of the Lord. There must be a vocal confession by a person of the Lordship of Jesus Christ. His lips must frame the words. Now, this is appearing on your screen, so write this down. I'm going to say this a couple of times. There must be a vocal confession by a person of the Lordship of Jesus Christ. His lips must frame the words. Okay? I'm going to say that again. There must be a vocal confession by a person of the Lordship of Jesus Christ. His lips must frame the words. I'm going to say that one more time. There must be a vocal confession, a vocal confession, a, a public vocal confession by a person of the Lordship of Jesus Christ. His lips must frame the words. What words? Romans chapter 10, verse 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Amen. This confession is not only for your own self, but it is for the sake of those uh, unsaved people around you, amen, that are in the world, and it is for the benefit of the devil, Satan, declaring that you are no longer under his dominion. Now, notice Matthew we left off with this scripture, Matthew chapter 10. This is where we left off, so amen. Buckle your seatbelts. Let's go for a faith ride in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Romans chapter 10, verses 32 and 33. Look at what Jesus, look at what he declared right here in this portion of scripture of Matthew chapter 10, verses 32 and 33. It reads as follows. Look at what Jesus declared right here. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father, which is in heaven. Look at verse 32. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father, which is in heaven. Wow, this is pretty powerful. Amen. There must be a public confession, a vocal proclamation concerning the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Amen. The individual must frame the words. Again, Romans chapter 10, verse 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Why, why does there need to be a public confession, Pastor Gill? Because Jesus himself said in Matthew chapter 10, verses 32 and 33, Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. 
But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father, which is in heaven. Amen. Notice that in the new birth, in receiving eternal life, there must be a public confession. Now that's appearing there on your screen, so I'm going to say this a couple of times. Notice that in the new birth, in receiving eternal life, there must be a public confession. I'm going to say that again. Notice that in the new birth, in receiving eternal life, there must be a public confession. I'm going to say that one more time. Notice that in the new birth, in receiving eternal life, there must be a public confession. You see, public confession is literally, literally making a complete break with the world. It's a change of lordship. It defines our position in Christ Jesus. It's, it's literally making a complete break with the world. It is a change of lordship. It defines our position. Now, write this down. This is going to appear there on your screen. The confession of the lordship of Jesus Christ puts us immediately under Jesus' supervision, care, and protection. I'm going to say that again. The confession of the lordship of Jesus Christ puts us immediately under Jesus' supervision, care, and protection. I'm going to say that again. The confession of the lordship of Jesus Christ puts us immediately under Jesus' supervision, care, and protection. I'll say that one more time. The confession of the lordship of Jesus Christ puts us immediately under Jesus' supervision, care, and protection. You see, Satan was once our Lord, but through confession, we changed lords. We have changed lords. When we receive Jesus Christ as our personal Savior and confess Jesus Christ as our personal Lord, Jesus Christ becomes our Lord. He becomes our head. He becomes our master. So it is imperative that we hold fast to the confession of the Lordship of Jesus Christ over our lives. It's, it's so imperative that we keep Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10 in the forefront of our meditation. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Verse 10, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Jesus said again in Matthew chapter 10, verse 32 and 33, whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I also confess before my Father which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. This is a very powerful principle. You confess Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord before men. Then Jesus Christ will confess you as his child before the Heavenly Father. But in this same breath, he said, whosoever shall deny, okay, whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father, which is in heaven. Okay? Amen. This is why it's so imperative that you confess the Lordship of Jesus Christ before other people. You need to let them know, I'm a Christian. Amen. You know, I, I, I want to be very, I, let me just give you just a quick, quick testimony on this. You know, um, at work, I used to have a, I, I, I worked uh, bivocationally before being full-time pastor. I, I worked another job, a full 40-hour job. And, um, you know, uh, I was an office manager at a company. And of course, you know, um, you have sinners working and, 
and had this one individual come in and say, hey, uh, Gil, uh, you know, I wasn't Pastor Gil. Of course, sinners don't call me Pastor Gil. They just call me by, by the first name, Gil. So they said, hey, Gil, come on, let's go have, let's go have a beer. And I told him, no, I, I'm not going to have a beer with you. I do not desire to have beer with you. And he said, why? I said, because I'm a Christian. Jesus Christ is my Savior and Lord. I'm a Christian. And when you asked me that question, there was a compelling in my conscience not to participate with you because drinking beer doesn't glorify Jesus. I'm a Christian. Well, you want to know something. There was a power that came into that room and that kind of opened the door uh, to kind of witness to him. Now, he rejected the gospel because he loved more the things of the world. But I do believe that that was a seed planted in his heart. You see, I confess Jesus before him. And because I confess Jesus before this particular sinner, Jesus Christ confessed me before my heavenly Father. I am marked as a believer. Why? Because I fully believe in my heart the Lord Jesus and I proclaim with, I, I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus, and I fully believe that God has raised him from the dead, and now he lives in me because I confess his lordship and the fact that he is my savior into my personal life. Okay? Confess Jesus before other people. I encourage you. You know, when you confess Jesus before other people, there's something that happens in the anointing of the Holy Ghost that marks you. There is an anointing that comes upon you. The anointing came upon me. If every Christian were to confess Jesus Christ as their personal Savior and Lord and proclaim that they are not ashamed of Jesus Christ, but that Jesus Christ is their personal Savior and Lord, I'm going to tell you right now, this is a 100% guarantee, and I'm telling you by the Spirit of the Lord as the anointing of the Holy Ghost is on me. You confess Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and Lord before men, there will be an anointing that will come upon you. The light of the Holy Ghost will shine in your conscience. There will be a courageousness and a boldness that will come upon you. And it's Jesus confessing you before the Heavenly Father in heaven. Again, Matthew chapter 10, verse 32 and 33. Look at what it says here. Look at what Jesus said. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father, which is in heaven. <clears throat> but whosoever shall deny me, whosoever, watch this, verse 33, but whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father, which is in heaven. Confess the Lordship of Jesus Christ to others and watch what God will do with your witness in Jesus' name. Now, the third kind of confession that is spoken of in the Bible is the believer confessing his sin when he has broken fellowship. That's going to appear there on your screen. The third kind of confession is the believer confessing his sin when he has broken fellowship. I'm going to say that again. The third kind of confession is the believer confessing his sin when he has broken fellowship. I'm going to say that one more time. The third kind of confession is the believer confessing his sin when he has broken fellowship. In other words, when you miss it and you don't confess, then that fellowship is broken. That's why it is so important to do 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. Let's go ahead and go there for the honor and glory of the Lord. This is where we talk very briefly, and this was our scripture. Let's go back to this. Let's go back to this. 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. Look at what it says here. Look at what John wrote to the entire church world under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now, let me preface something here. John is writing to the church. He's writing to Christians. He's writing to saints of God. 
Now, if you're saying, well, Pastor Gil, are we reading this correctly? If we confess our sins, 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I thought He cleansed us when we got born again. Oh, yes, He did. He did. But in the process of our spiritual growth, we're still human. And in the process of our growth, we can still miss it. Why? Yes, God is perfect, but we, the vessels, are imperfect, and we can miss it. And if we're not careful, we can sin. But in 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, John, under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, he wrote the following, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Okay? Now, here's the thing. We can miss it. And, and, and here's the thing. You know, we, 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 we kind of identify sins like adultery, uh, fornication, uh, stealing. But here's the thing. Also, gossip is a sin. Tailbearing is a sin. Huh? Lying is a sin. Uh, stealing is a sin. Uh, being unethical in your daily affairs, that's being crooked. That's also a sin. Okay? But thank God for 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, as we as believers, if we miss it, be quick to repent. Be quick to forgive. Be quick to be forgiven. Immediately, he says, oh, Lord, I, I, I missed that, Lord. I, 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 no, 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 I sit, Lord, I have sinned and have come up short of your glory. I repent for what I did. Father, forgive me. Wash me with your precious blood. Cleanse me from all sin and stain. And by faith, I receive your forgiveness based on 1 John 1, 9, that if I confess my sins, you are faithful and just to forgive me of all of my sins and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Hallelujah. Now, have you done that, Pastor? Yes, I have. When I have missed God, I immediately repent right away and ask God to forgive me. And if it involves people, I make it right with people and just say, no, forgive me. I, I did something or I said something uh, I, that I shouldn't have said or did. And I, I have sinned before God. I've asked God to forgive me. And now I ask you to forgive me in the name of the Lord. Be quick to repent. Be quick to forgive and be quick to be forgiven and you won't be far away from the presence of the Lord. Okay? The third kind of confession that is spoken of in the Bible is the, believer's conf is the believer confessing his sin when he has broken fellowship. Now, let me give you an example of a type of broken fellowship in Psalms 137. Let's see in Psalms 137. Psalms 137. Verses 1 through 4, for the honor and glory of the Lord. Psalms 137, verses 1 through 4. Let's see and give an example of a type of broken fellowship in, in Psalms 137. Psalms 137, verses 1 through 4. Look at what it says here, for the honor and glory of the Lord. Psalms 137, verses 1 through 4. By the rivers of Babylon... There we sat down. Yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. We hanged our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof. For there they that carried us away captive required of us a song. And they that wasted us required of us mirth, saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. Now look at verse 4. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? Interesting. Verse 4. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? Again, the scripture. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. Yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. We hanged our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof. For there they that carried us away captive required of us a song. And they that wasted us required of us mirth, saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. 
And what was their response? How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? Now, here in this portion of Scripture, we see right here that Israel had sinned. They had sinned. They had committed sin. Israel had sinned. They were carried away into captivity in Babylon. Now, they could remember Zion. Of course, they could remember Zion. Their harps were hung on the willows, and when their enemies asked for a song, what was the reply? Look at verse 4 of Psalms 137. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? Huh? How, sh how shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? Right here is a picture of broken fellowship. You see, we as Christians can potentially lose our testimony if we sin, okay? We as Christians, in fact, when we do sin, we as Christians lose our testimony the moment that we do sin. Now, this is going to appear on your screen. Write this down and never forget this. Sin always puts the light of the Holy Ghost out. Faith has no song when fellowship is broken. I'm going to say that again. Sin always puts the light of the Holy Ghost out. Faith has no song when fellowship is broken. I'm going to say that again. Sin always puts the light of the Holy Ghost out. Faith has no song when fellowship is broken. I'll say that one more time. Sin always puts the light of the Holy Ghost out. Faith has no song when fellowship is broken. Amen. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for what has been accomplished here this morning. Thank you that the Holy Spirit is convicting people right now in Jesus' name. Oh, Father, we thank you for an outpouring of the Spirit of God. We thank you for revival. We thank you that people are coming back to you. We praise you forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Have a great day in Jesus' name.